Good afternoon, everyone. Massive cold going to sweep through France. We're going to take a look at the Adriatic where these hot and cold air masses are colliding. The atmosphere is becoming unstable. Hail, rain, sleet, and snow. And the end result is EF2 water spouts. Feet and feet of snow through Greece. Romania, winter wonderland a month before winter. 100,000 additional lightning strikes. And the snows in Croatia, I thought, where have I seen Ogulin before? They were termed as witches of Klek, but they were the keepers of time. I've seen the same array of what is considered protector weapons for the earth, used by the gods, representing Birkeland currents, and flows into our star, affecting crop production and society on our planet, the fascination with the Big Dipper. The ancient cultures, the new cycles repeat. And when you have even more ancient cultures across the Adriatic setting themselves up with underground cave systems in large river valleys bordered by two rivers, we should be asking ourselves, what cycles were they following into what cycles on our doorstep again? And if you're interested in what a grand solar minimum is, I put together this reading list on my Amazon store, which is linked below. And not only that, the Electric Universe reading list, so you can understand more what Birkeland currents are and how our star goes through high activity and low activity and how that dictates our civilization on this planet. I'm going to start you off here taking a look at the temperatures over Europe. Extreme cold, southern UK and France You'll see massive weather fronts moving through with 60 mile per hour winds or more. Dumping heavy precipitation right at the lines where these heat and cold are colliding. So I want to bring you in right over here to a perfect example over the Adriatic as to what has happened. So if you see where Italy is, we're going to focus over across the Adriatic into that deep heat spot in Croatia. We have a very distinct, incredible blue, which is cold, and that incredible heat, which is the red. And they are smashed together with almost no space in between them. This is a perfect example of where you can start to pick out these atmospheric compression events and also the extreme weather that's occurring in these areas. And the end result is this. The atmosphere is completely unstable in this area. It's breaking off into these small vortices in pockets within pockets. And also where you see that striation of light pink, those are at least 60 to 80 mile per hour winds. Now understandably, some of this is over the Italian Alps, but it should not be going all the way down through Italy and all the way down to Greece and all the way down to Turkey because they don't have that high of mountain ranges going down that far. So these wind anomalies and pockets that you're seeing are extremely unusual. Now another representation here of the mix, and when I say that, I really mean hail, rain, sleet, and snow all bunched in on each other and this very tight pocket. Different coloration is different types of precipitation, but you're getting everything in one mixed bag within just a few hundred miles. It's resulted in these massive water spouts. Now, this is not just the only one in Italy. There's been a few more reported. There's one in Greece, Turkey, but these are the events occurring. This is like an EF2 tornado over water. The intensity of water spouts, just even in the last year, has really increased. Before, they were just wispy ropes coming down, but now the increase over last year. So as we move forward, you can imagine these being like EF5 tornadoes over water by 2023. And as you're looking through some of these weather charts and the anomaly maps for temperature, wherever you see that gradient of below normal temperatures crushing against above normal temperatures, which seems to be the new set up for how the jet streams are moving. You're going to continue to get these lines. This was 200,000 lightning strikes pushing through these exact same areas. Now, keep in mind, this wind and, and weather event has been going on for about three days. So I want to pull you back in time here a little bit to November 18th, November 19th. This is the amount of snow that has come down in Greece. Now, it's at 1,000 meters. That's only 3,000 feet. This is how much snow fell a month before winter. And to give you an indication, this is not at all normal. Roads were stopped. Snow equipment not ready to roll out yet because winter's not even for another month. 
Morning of 17, 18, 19, 20, and it just kept snowing, and it's continuing as we move forward. Taking a look into Romania during this same exact time here, November 19, 20, 21st, looking pretty deep. And I noticed the bench there, and I thought, yeah, I know you want to look at that. So I thought I'll zoom that in. So I know the media is doing the same thing they were doing back when it was summer and they were getting all these record snows and record cold in summer. They were just praying for autumn to come so then they could say, well, it's an early autumn event. Well, now the media is doing the same thing again, just hoping that winter comes so they could say it's an early winter heavy snowstorm, not a mid-autumn record-breaking all-time ever record snowfall in some of the snowiest countries in Europe. Across the Adriatic over into Croatia, and I'm going to be traveling to Croatia over the new year. So if you know any secret spots up there, please drop me a line. But take a look at coastal here. This is the rare thing. They don't usually get this much snow along the coast. Not two feet already and not even winter. This is an outlier so far out that records are being broken here as well. Now, I do want to bring you back to the reason I mentioned Croatia so much. The ancients were always focused on the stars. They knew that cycles repeated and that the stars were the indicators to when these cycles start to come yet again. Now think about the Sabians of Haran and how we would label them in the 1600s, 1700s. We would have called them witches and warlocks because they were the keepers of time. They understood astronomy. They were the warlocks. The earth was purged of anybody with this type of information by the Catholic Church for over 200 years. They would have had to hide underground, literally, with their teachings, with their symbology, and it would have become a secret type of initiation to even get in to understand this, because if you were an insider and turned them in, they were burned at the stake. They were the true keepers of time. Now, you need to keep this in mind as we go past this current civilization, even back five, 6,000 years. We need to go prior to that. So I'm going to bring you over here to Zagreb, this is right on the line where they're getting thunderstorms, yet literally 100 miles or less, they're getting two feet of snow down on the Adriatic. Incredible amounts of electrical activity in the atmosphere and what they were starting to get on the coast just yesterday, the 20th, now through the 21st, they're expecting more snow over the next few days is this. Heavy snows, unexpected Ogulin, it's about halfway down to the coast from Zagreb. But I remember this name because this is one of the areas that I wanted to visit in my travels over to Croatia coming up through the end of the year here. They have something very special there. Not only is this area termed and known for the witches of Kalek, but they also have an array of iconography and different ethnographic collection is what they call it. That's the what looks like wooden spears on the right. Now, I noticed the similarity right away because in my personal research, I have been studying what is termed as the protector weapons or the protector spears of Buddha to keep the earth and us as humans and our civilization from going extinct. These are the protectors. So there's 36 of the sticks in the Taoist temples. And if you line them up correctly, it just shows the difference between more highly charged Brooklyn currents to our star and our solar system and more pinched currents that make our sun go into a lower activity state. It's all spelled out in the myths and the religion as to how our star operates and how our civilization ebbs and flows. Well, you're starting to see the same thing right here. Instantly, I noticed this in Ogulin. And you'll even see where some of the Zeta Pinch and uh, the plasma flows are talked about within their collection as well. So what I was doing was I was lining this up and you'll start to see the representations of plasma inside the Taoist temples. And I just went through a few more of these and I'm getting together the full 36 collection so it, it maps out and I'm gonna create the story with the sticks. We're talking about Zeta pinches and they have been so feverishly at the very center of the Taoist is the Beido Qixing, which means the Big Dipper. Japan follows the same. Korea follows the same. It's something about where our pole star is and how the Big Dipper is rotating around the pole star, which indicates the shifts that come up. And that in turn dictates how much food we can grow, how many people can stay alive on the planet, and how the civilization is going to move forward over these multi-century, multi-millennial cycles. 
You know, they call it contraction as well, an expansion and contraction. Well, that is exactly what we are facing at the moment. I want to bring you right in here and see if you see any similarities in any of these ethnographs that I'm going to visit in Croatia as well. There's apparently more of these. I don't know exactly if there's 36, but this is only a partial representation of the entire collection. So if I can match this over in Croatia of what they have with more of an ancient culture, these are passed down iconography with what exists over here in Asia. That's not coincidence. That's mapping and following cycles on tens of thousands, plural, of years going back. And we know back into Babylon and Sumeria, the astrology and the mapping of stars was at the highest apex. That was the center of the center of the center of the civilization was knowing how the stars moved and how our planet was affected by this. That is no mistake. This is the same information being shared by ancient cultures that was passed down that survived the last cataclysms that is left for us to try to piece together again, literally. Now, taking a look at the present-day town of Ogulin, you have to think several millennia back, they set themselves up in a fertile valley with two rivers. But not only that, underground cave systems directly under the town. Now, in that past, it's been talked about bombardment from space, plasma events, electric geology, and all these underground cities were there for a reason. And when I say cavern system, this thing goes miles under the earth. Perfect way to survive celestial bombardment above on the surface. They're the keepers of time. They've been watching cycles come and go. We're coming to an end of an age right now. We're beginning this cycle into the grand solar minimum. So perhaps we should take heed or at least study or think about what were they pointing to with the cycles that they were looking at. Something large is at our doorstep. We need to prepare for decreased crop yields across the planet, literally the amount of food that we can produce and grow to feed everybody, all 8 billion people. By 2025, we're not going to have enough. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. If you like this type of conversation, commentary, join me for my tri-weekly podcast, Mini Ice Age Conversations, available anywhere on the net that you can find a podcast.